Welcome into the Sports Buffoons Podcast. Welcome on into the Sports Buffoons. We are back with Connor Dawson uh, helping us out on this New Year's special. And welcome, guys. We are celebrating the New Year's as we need to. Because 2020 was no fun for anybody. So this is what we're doing today, guys. we got a lot going on. We're going to talk some Chiefs, play a little game, and maybe even talk a little bit of playoffs as well. So, uh, you know, we're going to get this thing underway today. So we, first off, we got Mike. What it is, yo? We got Jason. What's up, guys? Happy and, New Year. Thank you all for joining us. And, of course, to my other side, the stranger, Connor Dawson. Hey, that's Coach Doss. Coach Doss. So, all right, guys, we're going to get this underway. We had a uh, pretty great matchup, I thought, with the Falcons this uh, last weekend. What were So, Mike, real quick, I want to know your thoughts. What was your biggest takeaway of this Falcons matchup that shouldn't have been that close of a game? The biggest takeaway, I think, is people just need to calm down a little bit. It has nothing to do with the game itself because it's still the NFL. And even though the Falcons were 4-10, it's actually a very talented team. So, uh, for me, it's, it's not a big deal, but I know people out there crying and whining about the Chiefs' offense struggling, and they did struggle. And the Chiefs' defense actually did prevail in this game and helped get the Chiefs a victory when it was ended up being 17-14. to 14. Um, I thought Patrick Mahomes had arguably his worst game of his Chiefs' career. And the reason being, I think that the Falcons sold out for the pass. The Falcons did not care about stopping the run. Derrick Williams both and Le'Veon Bell ran efficiently. efficiently. But Andy Reid does not want to run the ball. He'd rather throw Patrick Mahomes 45 times a game. And when teams know that, that's coming. Teams can back off into coverage, rush four, and then get pressure because the Chiefs O-line is garbage. And so with that said, uh, when, you're gar- when you have garbage O-line and you can only rush four, it's going to be tougher for the passing game to work. But luckily, we got the best quarterback in the NFL, so I'm not concerned going into the playoffs whatsoever with the number one seed in the AFC. So it sounds like Mitchell Schwartz might be out even coming up on the playoff time, is that do you guys buy into that, or do you think he'll be back? I mean, he might be back. I know he's been out since October, so or is it October or November? But he's been out for a long time. But we cannot have guys like Andrew Wiley going around and playing right tackle for this team because that guy is, is no business being on the outside edge at all. And so he's, he's purely an interior offensive lineman, and even then he's below average. Uh, so that's a big problem. Um, Schwartz might be back, but then again, when Schwartz was playing in the beginning of the year, it was he wasn't good. It was Schwartz has been Mitchell Schwartz's worst season of his career, and not only did he get injured, but when he wasn't, was like I said, when he was playing, it wasn't good. He was he was allowing sacks, allowing pressure, something he's never done in his career, even back in his days with the Cleveland Browns. So um, it's it's a concern for sure because we can't have Mahomes not trusting his line because right now he's bailing too early, he's drifting back on his passes, you know, he's constantly scrambling at the snap. And so he can't throw downfield, which is what he wants to do. That's his M.O. when you have a bad offensive line. So it's going to be a problem. Connor, what are your thoughts? You know, I I think the Falcons are underrated. I mean, they've been within pretty much every game right now. And, I, you know, I don't think people need to panic because, like, the Falcons did exactly what Mike said. They sold out for the pass. Their, interior, their rush defense was already good. Like, their interior line's awesome. Got Grady Jackson's a stud. So they didn't really need to worry about stopping the run because it's not like the Chiefs are running down people's throats every week. So selling out for the pass made a ton of sense. But, you know, people don't need to freak out. Like, the team has the best record in Chiefs history. They're the best team in the NFL. They're 14-1. and one. They got the first round by. Like, just because they don't put 40 points up and run five cool plays every week, like, <laughs> that's not even normal football anyway. That's not a normal thing that's going to happen. So... Um, I think it's fine. It's not like the Falcons are a bad team. Like, they're bad record-wise. It's because they can't finish games. But they're actually not a bad team, especially on both sides of the ball. They're a lot like the Chargers, I think. Exactly. Like, they're they're not a bad team. They just are really bad at finishing games. Exactly. (laughs) Yep. And, like, the the Falcons have been in pretty much every game they've been in this year. Mm -hmm. And they've even beat a couple of good teams. So, it's 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 not like we were facing some scrub. We weren't facing the Broncos, you know. Like yeah. we we're facing a real team that just has not finished games this year. Because that team could very easily be in the playoff hunt if 
I mean, they even get half of their games to, to go their way. Like, yeah. And that was the Falcon fair. Super Bowl, by the way. You could tell the energy level that they brought against the Chiefs was even better than I think the Chiefs brought against the Falcons. Like, yeah. So the Chiefs purely won just because we have better coaching, I believe, at the end of the mm-hmm. day. But the, the actual, I don't know, effort I saw from the Falcons, everyone on that team was going full throttle 100%. This was their game of the year, and they still ended up losing. So it yeah. tells you how good the Chiefs are. And, and, like, you know, you brought up Schwartz. Like, I do – like, there is a ton of concern, like, the interior offensive line. I don't think that's going to go away with or without Mitchell Schwartz. Like, that's going to exist how it is. But luckily enough, Mahomes is really good under pressure. He's good against the blitz. Like, the last week or two he hasn't been. But – you want to get you want Mahomes to get blitzed almost because if you blitz him, he's going to find the hole exactly. in the defense. So you want him to be blitzed. That's the problem when you're only rushing four. You're able to drop off seven into coverage, and so when guys are covered that way, it makes it tough. Yeah, I think they're fine. Like I have yeah. literally zero concern. Yeah. Even I know people complain about the defense too, but I'm I'm an analytics guy, and the defense is like a top five defense, defense analytically. Is great, like, actually, they play just um, fine. They're fine. The defense is good. The interior offensive line stinks. It'll get better. Like, it is what it is at this point. I'm sure that Andy Reid probably knows that his interior offensive line is what it is. Mm-hmm. And he's probably trying to make adjustments to it. Like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Just a reminder, guys, as much as we give the Chiefs crap, we are 14-1. and one. Hate to break it to you, 14-1. and one. JG, give me some thoughts on the game here. All right, Tanner. So when you started off the show, you said that this shouldn't have been a close game. When, in fact, I told you guys last week that this – would be a close you game. Did. You right? did. Right? So I don't know where you're getting this from. And, <laughs> you know, I'm like, the Falcons have played everybody close, almost everybody close this entire season. And so have the Chiefs, really. They, they've only blown out the Jets and maybe one other team. And so I was expecting a close game this entire time. Uh, Mahomes, he could have potentially given away the league MVP award if the Falcons would have come down with those other two interceptions that should have been interceptions. So Mahomes got lucky in that respect. Uh, But, you know, as far as the MVP race is concerned, you know, you've got Aaron Rodgers out there. He also threw a pick. So I still see those two guys Mm -hmm. as being dead even in the MVP race. Uh, Pat Mahomes, he's still got like 700 more yards than Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, Pat Mahomes has got six interceptions. Aaron Rodgers has five. You look at the odds. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has taken the lead on Bovada. He is minus 260 for the MVP race. Pat Mahomes is plus 210, which means absolutely nothing. I still think Pat Mahomes could win the MVP. Uh, But as far as the rest of the game, I thought the Chiefs defense, they played well against a a decent Atlanta offense with no Julio Jones. But we've got to give credit to that Atlanta secondary for just not allowing the Chiefs receivers to get open. And honestly, I'm just sick and tired of the fans and the media panicking and saying, well, what's wrong with the offense? You know, sometimes you need to credit the other team, guys. And so in this case, that Falcons defense finally stepped up after sucking for the rest of the season. And the bottom line for me is that the offense is just bored. Dude, the the offense of the Chiefs, they are bored of the regular season. They are the best team in the league by two games in the standings. They really had nothing, absolutely nothing to prove in this game against the lowly Falcons. And so these guys are ready for the playoffs. And when they go up to face a real team, you are going to see the Chiefs' A game. But you didn't see that A game against the Falcons because the Falcons suck. Is it because we play down to our opponent every freaking week? No, Tanner. The the, the opponents play up to the Chiefs. Like the Carolina Panthers, we didn't play down to the Panthers. Panthers showed up because they wanted it. We have the mark on our back as being the Kansas City Chiefs. And so I think in that case, teams look at us as the bar of where they're at in their own Wow, my Mike. own way uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> of uh, doing things. So I don't even. Did I shake the table? That was interesting. I think you might have shook the table. A little that was bit. an accident. I got. I got a little heated during that debate. <laughs> just pretend so, like nothing happened. Yeah, nothing happened. I'm just holding my microphone now. Um, but anyways, uh, no, so, I don't think the Chiefs played down. Okay, the Connor, what are your thoughts? It's on the that? NFL. Like all these teams are really good. Like yeah, yeah. they're professional football players. Like mm-hmm. 
the like even when we played the Jets, like the Jets are still like they're the worst team in the NFL. Okay, but they're still a professional football That's team. True. And the like, Jets beat the Rams. And the Jets did beat the Rams. It's not like every single team on the on in the NFL is just that much worse than the Chiefs. Like the Chiefs are, you know, <laughs> Alabama playing a bunch of high school teams. Like that's not how it is. Like it's still the NFL, and like those teams are still going to show up every week and play football. That's fair. That's fair. So I'm going to come back to the MVP talk here because I do want to discuss that for a little bit with you guys. But the thing that I I thought about the most after this game was it doesn't matter if Pat Mahomes is on fire. Sorry, Patrick Mahomes, sorry. Patrick Mahomes, if he's on fire, if our offense is on fire, if we're struggling on offense, our defense always seems to come away with some key take takeover, some key uh, three and outs. Like they, it's, it's amazing how this team complements each other when it's needed. The defense takes care of the offense. The offense takes care of the defense. And I think that's the reason why we are 14-1 and one going with a first-round buy in the AFC. I mean, what is a... It's, what is a struggling offense for the Chiefs? I guess what people would consider the last couple weeks, which is hard to imagine why it's you a struggling offense. The last week, like the one time the Chiefs didn't score a million points. 30 oh points. Gosh, that's 50 tough. points. What a bad offense. No, I can't believe it. Like, it it's just amazing. Hey, Mike, you're, you're, I think your mic's broken finally. No, it's not broken. It's not broken. We're, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're getting it figured out over here. So, you got bootleg Mike over there. Yeah, right? we did. Well, this is the first time this has happened in 36 episodes. It's true. So, <laughs> special episode. It was special just, appearance by It was just bound to happen. <laughs> but, hey, we have a producer in the background. <laughs> yeah, he's coming in to save the day. But I just think it's amazing how this team complements each other on both sides of the ball, and that's a huge reason why, as Chiefs fans, we like I I wasn't worried at all coming to the Falcons game when I went into work at after halftime or towards to the fourth quarter and we were back and forth and while I was listening to Mitch I still wasn't worried because I know what we can do as a team. Well, let's not forget the real MVP of the entire team. The past two weeks is Tommy Townsend, that our beautiful Tommy. punter, because that guy has been put. He's been hitting that hard. punt. That punt. The one at the two. Well, here's the thing: is like. Our offense did not have a good week last week. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, my gosh. What a oh, they suck. <laughs> but, like, the, a large part of the reason that the defense has been set up so well is because of the special teams unit and Tommy Townsend hitting darts. Yes. And, like, without him hitting darts, like, if he doesn't hit three balls inside of the 20 last week and he sets those guys up at the 35 or 40, like, it's a different, it's a game. different game. But instead, they have to go that much further against our pass defense, which is really, really good. And, like, it just makes it that much harder. So, like, let's not forget the unsung hero who never gets any love and who should be a pro bowler, Tommy Townsend. Well, you know, he did get a lot of love on this podcast. On this podcast. Because I think he was my number one Chiefs MVP who was not named Patrick Mahomes. He gets it. And so we gave him credit uh, at the very, very beginning of the season. But going back to the offense, I mean... You guys talk about the struggling offense, I mean, and then they bring up the fact that, oh, the defense finally stepped up. Are you kidding me? We've been a top seven defense the entire year. And right now, uh, I think think we're the number six defense in the league. So it's not like the defense has just struggled and been crapping the bed all season long. We're still the number six defense in the league. We're only giving up 21.6 points per game. So, you know, as much as I want to give credit to the defense in this game, it's like the defense has been doing it on and off the entire season. It's not like we're a bottom feeder we're for, not. for the defense. So it's like we are good on both ends of the field. And so all these fans that keep saying, oh, well, what's wrong with the offense? What's wrong with the defense? Dude, get it straight. Look it up in the rankings. We are solid the entire season on both ends of the field. I would argue that our defense is better that's probably the best defense we've seen in the Mahomes era. I, don't I, see, I, Mahomes just, era, I think the defense down the stretch last year was better than this year's defense. Maybe down the stretch, but I'm saying right. in totality of the season. Of the whole thing? Yeah. I That's guess, right. but when it came time for, I think, Ben to make plays at the end of the season, especially once Mike Pinnell came along last year, it seems like Mike Pinnell might have been better last year than he is this year, even at this point. But I think this year's defense has been, I mean, giving up 31 points to the Panthers, I think was, it was a rough skid there. But, uh, They've been hit or miss. That's been my biggest gripe with the defense this year. But they've also still had that Steve Spagnuolo 
flexibility within the system as well to where you're bringing pressure from all different angles and creativity. So I like that a lot because you still have the best, one of the best coordinators in the league, in my opinion, yeah. running the show. Oh. But that, that's actually a good debate because I was actually thinking about this earlier uh, on Sunday. Is this the be- is this Chiefs team we have here in 2020 uh, going into 2021 better than the Super Bowl Chiefs team we just saw last year? Yes. I think this is a better team. So you put them head to head. I think the reason that they win is because we have a healthy Patrick Mahomes the entire season. And whereas last year, I think Mahomes was hobbled for probably seven games out of the year. Well, you guys know that I cannot answer that question because I am the <laughs> ultimate jinx on this show. And so yeah, be quite I, I'm not going to say if this is the best chief team that I've ever seen. Uh, yay or nay. I'm not going to say one way or the other because you know, once I open my mouth, that's game over. But. Um, you know, I'm happy with what I'm seeing. I'm not going to say they're the best until they take us to the promised land. Only time will tell, guys. Only time will tell. So, real quick, before we hop into the preview of this upcoming week, uh, I want to get your guys' thoughts here. So, Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers are in the struggle of the MVP debate, right? Aaron Rodgers just went off in the snow game against the Titans at Lambeau Field this last week on Sunday Night Football. Uh, I guess, Connor, first off, I want to know your thoughts. Like, is Aaron Rodgers the MVP, or is it Patrick Mahomes, or is there a clear-cut decision that can be made here? Uh, See, that's tough because I look at the MVP much differently than most people. Um, So my MVP would probably be, like, a Derrick Henry. Okay. Granted, that does have a lot to do with the Titans making the playoffs, but you can't tell me that uh, if you put, uh, who is it, Deion Lewis, who's the old running back for the Titans, like if Deion Lewis is back there with that offense, like they stink. <laughs> like They're not good. Yeah. Well, how uh, many wins do they have on the season right now? Is it 10 or 11? I think Titans? it's 10. They're on 10. So you take away Derrick Henry, you put them down to what, 7 wins? And they're out of the playoffs. Like that, they are literally a playoff team because of Derrick Henry. So mm-hmm. now then you go to Mahomes, like, Obviously, Mahomes has his own factor. Like, he's only got six turnovers, I think, this year. It's over 5,000 yards. The only player in the NFL with over 5,000 total, you know, total purpose yards. Um, he's obviously the best player in the league. So, yeah, he's pretty valuable to the team. Rodgers, obviously incredibly valuable to his team. But I would argue that Rodgers has far more weapons on his roster than Mahomes does. And, yes, I know, like, Tyreek Hill, Kelsey – Rodgers has one of the best offensive lines in football, especially interior offensive yes. lines. And then he's also got the best receiver in football, Devontae Adams. Robert Tonyan's an outstanding tight end. He's got three or two other weapons in Valdez Scanlon, and he's also got Alan Lazard. Like, he's got some serious weapons on the offense. Plus, I would also argue that the Packers' defense is much better than the Chiefs as well. Um, so, I mean, you have that factor in there as well. Um you could also, I could also make the case for Devontae Adams just simply being the most valuable player, but the offense was still kind of rolling without him. Um, but I would probably throw, I would throw Derrick Henry the MVP in my opinion. And even if, honestly, even if the Titans don't make the playoffs, like he truly is the most valuable player to their team, like to one specific team in the NFL. I know that's a kind of a wild card out there, but that is a wild card. It's not a wild card if you listen to my last podcast because no, I went through yeah, the top six players that are not quarterbacks correct. that should be in the running but for the MVP But you know Dick Henry isn't going to win the MVP award this year. He's just not in that conversation right now. He should be, but he's not. It's literally between Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. Right, it's because of positional value, Tanner. Correct, yeah. So, who, who, is there, so is there a clear-cut favorite, though, right now? To me? After, the, after this last weekend, does that hurt Patrick Mahomes? Or does it help Patrick Mahomes in any way? There it is, doesn't help Patrick Mahomes. There is no clear-cut favorite right now. I just gave you guys the odds. It's Pat Mahomes plus 210, Aaron Rodgers minus 260. Like, that's basically a pick em. And what you have to understand here is Packers are getting ready to play the Bears. That is a tough divisional matchup. We don't know what's going to happen in that game. We do know that Patrick Mahomes will not receive very many snaps, if any snaps. Mm-hmm. And so, but... You know, when Packers go up against the Bears, I mean, that could be a very difficult game. I mean, Aaron Rodgers could throw two picks in that game. You just know what, don't know what's going to happen. All right. Yeah, I speaking, think Rodgers is the MVP. That's speaking funny. of uh, Chad Henney season, <laughs> uh, I'm still in a league that for some reason this league has a Week 17 championship, which drives me through the Well, we did for a while. But 
I'm in the league championship and I've got Mahomes. Uh, and uh, this past week, <laughs> just knowing that Mahomes, like they were going to rest if they won, I picked up Chad Henney and I picked up uh, Daryl Williams. And Chad Henney is my starting quarterback in the fantasy football championship this week. What about Daryl Williams? Is he one of your starters? Uh, probably not, just because I have Jonathan Taylor, James Robinson, and Austin Eckler. Okay. So I probably don't need him, but he, he may hop in a flex. We have two flex positions, but um, I've also got Stephon Diggs and a couple of receivers, so he may not hop in. So Yeah, I got to say another that one, I, Diggs. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. I, I got to say that I feel sorry for you for having a Week 17 game because we had this situation last year and my two, the two best players on my team were Alvin Kamara and Devontae Adams. Yep. I benched both of those guys in the championship game of my league. And that's the, that's the whole reason why we don't have week seven that's why we quit that. games anymore. So, all right, guys, we're going to touch base here real quick on the Chargers preview coming up. Uh, so we do face Los Angeles Chargers at home uh, this Sunday afternoon. Uh, so, guys, real quick, I mean, what are your thoughts against this? Obviously, we're expecting no Mahomes, no Clyde Edwards, uh, possibly a lot more uh, Williams running the running back, uh, probably no Chris Jones, no Tyron. Like, is there is there anybody you're looking forward to seeing play? Like, what, what are your thoughts coming up here? Well, I'll tell you, the number one guy I'm looking forward to seeing this game is Justin Herbert because he's still fighting for that rookie of the year spot. I think he is the favorite right now. He's got 4,000 yards and, uh, like, uh, 10 touchdowns. And so, you know, 28 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. But, you know, my whole point for the Chiefs side of this game is that the guys who are banged up should not play, and the guys who are healthy should play in the first quarter. And so they just need to get a few reps in before the playoffs. And I hate it when teams come out rusty after taking a couple of weeks off. So I, I just want to treat this like a glorified preseason game and get these guys some meaningful reps in the first quarter, and then it's okay to shut them down. Like like I said, if you're healthy, you should be playing in that first quarter. But after that, you know, I don't want to see any of these starters. All right, Mike, what do you, I mean, what do you got going on? Yeah, I agree with the whole idea behind it being like a glorified preseason game. We're going to see more Willie Gay, which we saw quite a bit of this past week, which is going to be great. Um, So I think that's going to be good for the future. I think Armani Watts is going to get plenty of playing time, which he's a guy who's kind of on the verge of being cut going into next year, and I think he probably will be. Um, And then as far as when it comes down to the D-line, I'm looking forward to seeing quite a bit more of Mike Dana as well as some Tano Pass and, you know, getting a lot of reps in that regard. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how those things play out, as well as did you guys see Garrett Dieter on the field this past week? Yeah, he was in special teams. That was weird. I, you know, I didn't even realize he was active. He was active and he was on the field playing. He even played a couple snaps on offense. I say I think I saw he got like 73% of the special team snaps. So so Garrett Dieter, Byron Pringle will be a receiver quite a bit, and that's going to be fun to watch. That's a Pringle, too. Um, that's a good <laughs> The Chiefs are not going to have a tight end worth of crap, so that does not matter to me whatsoever. I think the backups after Kelsey are complete garbage. Are, are, do we have Ricky Seals Jones playing? Is he finally playing? A uh, he did play. He and played he last is, week. I know, but like, yeah. is he actually going to be getting the ball? Who cares? Hopefully not. No, they traded him back to Arizona. Please. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Send him back to Arizona. No, no, he That's goes. That's the car. Here you go, man. <laughs> Put Nick Kaiser back where he came from. Uh, uh, Sills Jones back out to Arizona. Just to get yeah. yelled in? All these tight ends after Kelsey are just garbage, so they really don't matter. Uh, I think I'm looking forward to the most, I guess, watching Daryl Williams run yeah. because I do like Daryl Williams in general. So, And I guess Chad Henney, like uh, Connor talked about, maybe he'll get, some, get you some three touchdown passes to help you win your league. But that's about it, honestly. Can we just start Chad Henney at running back? Because I don't want to see Daryl Williams get injured either in this game. True. Daryl Williams is becoming a, a good part of the offense. He's a good downhill running back. That's that's what I'm most curious to see is Daryl Williams and Chad Henney. Uh, well, Chad Henney, number one, just because I, I, I would really love a fantasy championship. Um and I would love to see Chad Henney run another option for a touchdown like he did against Denver. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but more Daryl Williams just to see, like, just in case Clyde's not able to go in the playoffs or at the start mm-hmm. of the playoffs. I would love to see the passing game because I imagine they're probably not going to open up the playbook a ton. No, so it's probably going to be a lot of Daryl Williams action. It's going to be a throwback to the Alex Smith days. Exactly. Um, Which, hey, remind, remind me of this. Aiden Reed's well-known for benching his starters in Week 17. He's done historically when the Chiefs wrapped up the AFC West. And so, remember the season where Alex Smith did not throw a touchdown to wide receiver? 
Mm-hmm. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Chase Daniel came in and threw to Dexter McCluster on a screen pass to give the Chiefs a receiving touchdown in Week 17. Against the Chargers. Yeah. yeah remember that. that. So Chase Daniel threw a touchdown to a wide receiver that, that, that season, but Alex Smith did not. <laughs> well, the Chargers hit a field goal at the end to win that game, didn't they? It was like Chase Daniel won the game. Oh, is I it? I, Chase Daniel was. Uh, yeah, Chase Daniel. Kyro Santo hit the field goal. It was like thirty-three to thirty. Or I'm pretty something sure it was Kyro like Santo. But like, yeah. it was like thirty-three to thirty. I remember it was the Chase Daniel game. Yeah, <laughs> he had a couple of funny games actually. As a Which chief, they're basically the same. So, back, so yeah, at this point. Yeah. So real quick here, I don't know how much this actually matters to anybody. Maybe just as a bragging rights game, but you know the Chargers came out with Herbert and. Like, Herbert with a last-minute fill-in start the first time we saw them. And he came out, and he was really strong. He performed really well. He gave us a tough time, and we we won at the very end here. Uh, are you guys worried about if we win or lose? Or are you guys just like, hey, we're going to see some action, and if Herbert does really well, then he does really well? I want to win. Like, like I want to win. Okay. Like, <laughs> I want to go 15 and one. You know how cool that would be. It does matter if we win because if Mahomes gets hurt in the playoffs and we have to deal with Chad Henney at quarterback, like it would be really nice yeah. to know that Chad Henney can actually run some version of the offense. Yeah. Because I have a little bit of a doubt there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> like, yeah. It's kind of important that we win in 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 that regard. You think he's better than Matt Moore? No. no. Team, I'm Team Matt Moore. I've been Team Matt Moore since he was a Dolphin. No, that's what I mean. Do you think Chad Chad Henney's better than Matt Moore? So Chad, so Chad Henney. You think they should have kept Matt Moore over Chad Henney as a backup? I yeah. am as team Matt yeah. Moore as it gets. I can't believe they cut him, actually. I was surprised. What do we call them? The Viking killer from last year? It's from our Minnesota people? Yeah. I mean, he played well against the Vikings for sure. Nah, dude. I, I do not want to see a win here. I want them to lose their ass. I want this to be a blowout game. You okay. know why? <laughs> because how do, you, how do you play best in life? You play, the, you play your best game after you lose. Yeah, that's so, not real in sports. But, I want to say, but it's not the same. Like it's not I the same. I want to see man. them lose their ass because you know what's going to happen? They're going to come out motivated in the playoffs as a mother effer and be like, "Oh, I just we just lost our last game, dude. You're you're going to fail after you win. Like you go fifteen and one. No, you want to go fourteen and two because you you lost your no, last game. No, no, it's not. That's not the same thing as losing in the middle of the season." After you lose to the Raiders and coming out and kicking ass the whole way through, it's a total different game. Are you trying to tell me that Patrick Mahomes is not going to be pissed off if they lose this game? No, because he's on the freaking bench. No, he's because he's be a pissed. professional athlete, and professional athletes don't care about that. <laughs> like they don't. Like thank you. I wanted a professional yeah. opinion on this. Pro that's, teams that's don't like. They play the game, and like if they lose, like. They're not going to sit there and cry about it for a week. Like, they're going to accept, like, okay, yeah, we lost. Like, we just got to get better. But, like, that's not a real thing. Like, they don't care that they, like, obviously they care that they lost. Yeah. But they're not going to let that ruin the entire week, and they're not going to let the next week be all about, I can't believe we lost the Chargers yesterday. Like, the game's over. And, like, that's just professional athletes just don't do that. That's a, that's a great perspective, and I'm glad you brought that up because you're, you're basically saying that Patrick Mahomes doesn't really give it give a damn if they if they lose this game, you know, when all the starters didn't even play. I don't think Patrick Mahomes is going to change the way that he prepares for a game, whether they win or lose this game against the Chargers. I don't think he would have changed the way he prepared for a game, whether they won or lost to the Jets. Like, I don't think he changed the way he prepared for a game after they lost to the Raiders. Like. It doesn't change. Like, that's what good professional athletes do. They don't change that routine. Like, they accept that they lost, and it's like, oh, man, that stinks, like, obviously. And, like, and they're pissed about it or whatever. But they're not going to sit there and just, oh, God, we lost. We have to change everything. That's all we have to focus on is what went wrong. Like, no, they're going to see what went wrong, and they're going to address it, but it's not going to be the end-all, be-all. Like, that's not how – that's just not how they function. Yeah, that's excellent. So – Basically, what you're saying is, like, the win-loss column doesn't matter after this game. No, because they're in the playoffs. It doesn't right. matter after every yeah. game. All that like, matters is what happens in January and February. All that matters is what happens yeah. on Sunday when they play the game. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. all they care about. Like, I'm sure the Jets probably didn't care that they were owing whatever going into that game against the Rams. Like, they were probably trying to win that game on Sunday, just mm-hmm. as they probably were on week 1 through 14 or whatever it was. Like, they were probably still going into Sunday like, uh, it doesn't matter what our record is, we want to win. And I'm sure that goes for every single team. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I think over time, though, especially the Jets situation that they dealt with was you do have some motivation for sure. Whenever you are 0-10 or 0-11, 0-12, I think that you do have a little bit more fire to like want to get a victory just for the, the purpose of like feeling like you're not the worst team of all time where we saw the Lions go 0-16 one season. And the players to this day have still spoken about that season and talked about well, how awful it was to go winless for an entire season. They still felt the effects of that. The guys want to win. And I'm sure that there's also a portion of that, too, where the Jets guys are like, oh, man, we really want to get a win. But there's also a large, large portion of that is like, hey, we want to play really well so we can have a job next year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. That's a, it's a pretty important piece. We're too. all auditioning for jobs for next year for different 100%. teams. Because so. I, I bet most of those guys probably don't want to be on that organization next year if they have the option for that. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're going to jump into actually a little fun game. But before we jump into the fun game here, I want to know something real quick. Uh, Mike, what do you got up there for your drink tonight? Well, you guys, it's it's almost New Year's, so thank you all for listening in on our pre-New Year's uh, celebration as we are sitting here currently. I currently have a bullet bourbon with a little bit of Diet Coke mixed in, and I got also a, I'm getting real, real wild up in here, real white girl wasted with the Bud Light Platinum yeah. Seltzer 8% ABG. Fridge. And Tanner, on New Year's, I'll be doing some Espolón uh, tequila shots. That's what my plan is for New Year's Eve. <laughs> Where are you going New Year's Eve? I will be out in Arvada, actually Denver, Colorado, spending some time out there, seeing my family and hanging out with some friends. And uh, it's going to be a great time. I'm very much looking forward to it, to getting out of town. Although, don't don't, don't tell my boss. But um, He doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need to know. It's okay. We're all good. But, um, yeah, that's what we got going on. Um, and, I mean, that's about it. So let me go ahead and real quick crack this open. And get the party started for the pre-New Year's Eve celebration. All right, Jason, what you got tonight? Well, we're going to go with the uh, Dark Truth Imperial Stout from Boulevard Brewing Company because that was the best thing that I saw on the shelf. That was <laughs> the best thing you saw on the shelf. Well, tonight, guys, I got a uh, Everything Rhymes with Orange Tall Boy, one of the best drinks you can just have out there. It's, it's always solid to drink, uh, easy to drink, too, so it can get you in trouble. Connor, uh, what do you got? I had a bush latte, and now I'm drinking water. So, <laughs> All right, man, you're going heavy tonight. Yeah. I usually go Diet Coke on these nights, but we're doing it on a Tuesday instead of a Wednesday. So that will help things out. All right, guys, so last night, I don't know, roughly about 9 p.m., I asked uh, Twitter folks a series of poll questions to see what I can get out of them. It's kind of a fun game to do. I was kind of bored, and it was a good, I thought it was a good idea. So here's some of the questions that came through my head, and I want to know between the three of you which one you think Twitter verse picked. So our first one here today, I'm not going to pull it up on the screen yet, uh, but who was the MVP this year? The options were Mahomes, uh, Allen, and Rodgers. I wonder what all the Kansas City people said. So, Mike, what was, what was the well, question okay, again? So. <laughs> <laughs> who is the MVP this year? Aaron Rodgers is my MVP. Okay. No, we're, we're going to off the Twitter verse. Who do you think that Twitter picked? Yeah. Twitter? Yeah, I, I wonder if Twitter picked Patrick Mahomes. What do you Mahomes? think Twitter yeah. verse is it picked? From, is it our Twitter? It's through the buffoon's Twitter. Oh, Mahomes. Yeah. They picked Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. yeah they de- like, are you kidding me? Like, okay, so the results of this one was uh, 67% of the Twitter verse picked Mahomes, 0% picked Josh Allen, and 33% picked Aaron Rodgers. You all get a point. Congrats. Derrick Henry is the, the real MVP, so. <laughs> Although, take Josh Allen off Buffalo, what's their record? Yeah, it's true. I don't think that'd be the same at all. Nobody's passing Stephon Dix the same way. All right, guys. So the next question here is, who has, actually, it's still loading for you. Sorry. But who has the best fan base? We have Packers, Chiefs, Bills or other? That's subjective, but I do like guys to throw themselves through tables. So I think that's pretty cool. They remind me a lot of my pro wrestling days, uh, back when I used to watch The Rock and Stone Cold and Undertaker. But uh, I think the best fan base does reside here in Kansas City. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Now, if you're talking about Twitter, i got to go with the Green Bay Packers. The only reason is because you can do that Lambo leap. And even though we have COVID-19 this year, you could still do that Lambo leap if you're watching the game on your own sofa. Just jump into your own sofa and do the Lambo leap. I'm, I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers on that one. Car? Uh, well, I guarantee that the, that your Twitter account probably said the Chiefs, but um, uh, I have actually had 
the pleasure to experience Packers fans when I lived in Iowa. That's yeah. I have coaching friends that are Bills fans, and then obviously Chiefs fans. And Bills fans are a different monster. Uh, so the Bills fan base is 100%. The I would I would rank that Bills Packers a gap. And then the Chiefs. So we're Just all wrong. Yeah, it's, we're all no, wrong. Basically. Well, the the Twitter people said the Chiefs. Come on, but the Bills fans are a different monster. That's fair. So. I have a friend, a coaching friend, that literally has he he put it on Facebook like two days ago. He built a Lego stadium. He built a Lego Ralph Wilson Stadium of the Bills. It's like, dude, you're you're nuts. Like yeah, Chiefs fans aren't doing that. All right, <laughs> Packers fans just own the team. So like, there's a pretty big stake there. Chiefs so. fans are honestly. No offense to you guys out there, but you guys are annoying. And you guys lack a lot of football knowledge. Yeah. See, they still think that, like, tight ends win you championships at all times because, like, you just as soon as Tony Gonzalez left the Chiefs, it's like, we got to get another tight end. And yeah, we got Travis Kelsey five years later, but they just thought that that was, like, the end-all, be-all of an offense. And, I mean, Tony Moyaki was legit. Yeah, Tony so. Moyaki, and then, you know, just go on and on. Wait, who is that? McGrath, just need, McGrath, McGrath, right? McGrath, right? Castle just needed better receivers to catch the ball. The beard, McGrath? Great. Yeah. Was yeah. one of the big ones. So. He actually wasn't too bad. No. So, all right, guys. So, the results of this one was Packers at 14%, Chiefs at 57%, so and I'm the Bills at 29%. So, the Packers came in last. So, I'm 2 0 in your polls now, Tanner. You are 2 0 in your polls. Very biased. Very biased. I don't want to recount. Yeah, these polls, <laughs> these polls <laughs> are biased. They're biased. Yeah. Biased. All right, that's this next one, Loads, guys. The next one is, and I spelled is wrong because of my phone, but who is the offensive player of the year? Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill, Dalvin Cook, Kamara, Alvin Kamara. Yeah. What's your options there? That's a that's a good one because I do like Kamara quite a bit, especially. I he, do like Kamara. He just had six rushing touchdowns and one. He could have had seven if that's he was a, if he was going to be selfish. That's a, that's a record I thought would never be broken in today's NFL, and he came close to breaking it. Yeah. So that's pretty special, especially from a receiving back, a guy who catches a hundred balls a year, just about. And all of a sudden he's going to go out and have six rushing touchdowns. That's pretty crazy. But uh, as far as offensive player, this is the best season in tight end history coming from Travis Kelsey that we've ever seen, including anything Jimmy Graham's ever done, Rob Gronkowski, Tony Gonzalez. To me, Travis Kelsey is the offensive player of the year and has been the most efficient player of any players you just mentioned. Jason? Yeah, I mean, if you're going with player of the year, I mean, i got to go with Alvin Kamara. I mean, he's actually got more points – in our fantasy league than Russell Wilson. So I'll go with Kamara. He actually should have had seven touchdowns in that game. I was watching that game, and all of the fans were pissed. But he wasn't selfish. They didn't put him in there. Go ahead, Connor. Get the record. Well, I'm going to guess that your poll probably said Travis Kelsey. Um, <laughs> but the real answer here is none of these guys, and it's somewhere between Devontae Adams and Derrick Henry. So... That's uh, that's that's really what the answer. Adams is. has been one of those two this year. He's been and, this is watching Adams play has been incredible this year. With mm-hmm. as, as good as Aaron Rodgers is, Adams has been a, a different level of, him own, of his own self this year, and it's something he's now with 16 touchdowns on the year, 17 receiving, something like that. It's it's crazy. It's, amazing. it's, it's, amazing. Somewhere, yeah, it's, it's somewhere between Derrick Henry and Devontae Adams is the actual answer. That's true. I understand your point about Devontae Adams, but to my point on my previous podcast. Uh, if you take Derrick Henry off that team, they're absolute trash. Yeah, and he, he carries the them on their back, just like LeBron James. They got AJ Brown. Carry they're those fine. crappy Cavs <laughs> teams on his back. Trainer, I would have removed. That's Alvin what Derrick Henry is doing right now. I'd remove yeah. Alvin Cook from your list. All right, so, him on there. so the the Twitterverse said Kelsey 100. percent I'm three and oh, oh, I'm shocked. Kelsey 100. percent Who would have thought, guys? Who would have thought? It's Jesus. Recount. All right. So the next one is who was the rookie of the year? Clyde, uh, Chishion, Jefferson, or is there another rookie that we're not talking about? Uh, Chargers well, quarterback's pretty good. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we went over, right. Tanner, we went over this debate last week, actually. We did. And I think Justin Jefferson's been incredible. In fact, I put him just barely above Justin Herbert as far as my rookie of the year. Uh, but I think Herbert has been outstanding and think he's going to probably, spoiler alert, beat the Chiefs coming up in Week 17. But uh, I'm going to go with Jefferson based on what you gave me a list of there. Okay. I'm going, yeah. to, uh, I'm, I'm going with Justin Herbert. I understand the, the argument with uh, Justin Jefferson. I mean, he's got freaking Kirk Cousins throwing him the ball. But when you look at Justin Herbert, he's got a freaking idiot coach that doesn't know what the hell he's doing. So I'm going to give it to Justin Herbert. Connor? Uh, let's see. Who's the list? Jefferson? I don't think he's a captain. Young? Um, Clyde? 
Clyde, he's not a captain. Herbert's not a captain, I don't think, is he? Um, no, but Chase Young's a captain of his team. He's Five a half that. Chase Young's a captain of his team. Chase Young's one of the best defensive players in football. Mm-hmm. Um, he will be. I'm taking Chase Young. Who does that half sacks right is, the, is the rookie of the year for you? Hey, who the rookie of the year? Like, do you just see what he's done to that offensive, the defensive line? He's a phenomenal player. I think he's gonna be so amazing going forward. Oh my! If I have to compare him to guys like Herbert or Jefferson, I think those. Two hey, okay, so high. fine. Okay, I'll take I'll take <laughs> Chase Young, defensive lineman, out of it. The only guy who's been named a captain, I'm pretty sure, but I don't know that for sure. So. That's not a fact, but it's I know a that phony label right yeah, now. Yeah, I know that's leadership. I know that he's named a captain of his team. Just but, like, hey, Dwayne Haskins was a captain for most of the season. Did you? So, yeah, until he got stripped mind. and turned into Chase Young. So <laughs> you mean he, 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 he went to the strip? He went to the strip club. Yeah, that's what you mean by strip. Did you um, see what Chase Young did though last week? Come on, Tommy Hanke coming in, and he's like, he went out there on the field and pumped him up. Like, let's be real. I, Anyways, I'm gonna say Justin Jefferson. Okay, so who is rookie of the year for the? Twitter rich from Sports of Clyde. Clyde is 17%. Okay. Young with 33%. Jefferson with 50 I'm 4 0 now, Tanner. There's point. no Herbert even involved. No other. Hey, because okay. you didn't list him as an option. Well, was, I couldn't only list four <laughs> options. Quit doing other, just put Herbert, Tanner. Shut up. <laughs> Herbert sucks. Anyways, all right, so we're going to move on, guys, to our fifth one here. All right, so we just did rookie player. All right, we already going backwards. Do the Bears make the playoffs? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, the Bears are who we thought they were. Are we going to do the uh, in and out segment of the playoffs? Not yet. Not this is yet. Just a yes or no question. Okay, yes or no? The Bears are who I thought they were, but not who you thought you guys thought they were. They're, they're still average. They're, gonna make they're still an playoffs. average team. At best. Team. No, they're not going to make it. Birds are going to make it. Let's go, Birds. Birds are going to make oh it? Let's go, Birds. There's no <laughs> chance of that happening. Let's go, Birds. They screwed right. themselves last week 20 to 12. Hey, I'm a Cards fan. Like, that's. I know. I like the Cardinals, too, but they screwed themselves. Twitterverse with the yes, they will make it. Mitchell with two L's. Don't forget. Now, here's an interesting question for you all. I didn't even realize until last week that they were still in contention, but do the Cowboys make win the division? No. I'm going to save mine for later. I'm going to give you guys the lowdown on this. I think the Cowboys win the division, and I think they win a playoff game. Wow. Connor with the big one. Andy Dalton season. Andy yeah. Dalton season. You know, Andy Dalton's got more 350-yard uh, with three touchdown games than Russell Wilson. Actually, no, I didn't. Yep. That's pretty impressive. It's Andy Dalton season. Uh, Twitterverse says yes, 20%, and no, 80%. What is it? They got. The, what is it? The Eagles have to win, or who is who has to win? The uh, oh, Cowboys got to uh, beat Washington. Washington, yeah. And uh, no, that, basically that's it. The Cowboys have to beat Washington. Alex Smith led Redskins. Yeah. That's right. I said it. But Alex, but Alex Smith is playing now. Finally, after two weeks, so yeah, I mean, we'll be yeah. good. Stay tuned if you guys want to bet on this stuff. I'm going to give you the lowdown. The Cowboys are so show. much better than the Red <laughs> or the Washington Football Team. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I, we, don't worry. We do it every week here. Uh, do the Jets trade back? Yes or no? Who cares? Yeah. Uh, do they trade back? Yeah. Do they trade no, back? They stay. They stay? Yeah. Do they stay? Uh, yeah, I would say you're probably going to want to stay on that. I think if they're smart, they trade. If they're smart, they trade. So Twitterverse says yes, 67%. No, 33%. So okay, That's a good question for April, I think. It is coming. It uh, will be a good question for April. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'm just, like I said, these are just thoughts I had on my head, That's man. Fun. Thoughts I had on my head. Thought it'd be kind of fun. All right. Next one is J.J. Watt a Texan next year? Yes. No. No. He's going. Real quick. You, know, you guys have any guesstimate where he's going? Uh, it's a, that's a tough call at this point. I mean, he's going to be a very highly coveted so, player. But my other option on this is retires. No, he won't retire. He's not then playing yet. No, he's he's gonna be gone. But the thing about JJ Watt is, you know, gonna go to good you team. gotta you gotta sell high, and so this guy's over the hill. So whoever pays him the money, they're gonna lose big time. The guy's over the hill. He's not gonna be very productive at this point in his career. I'd rather have Derek Watt at this point. All right. If the Texans care about their culture, they keep JJ Watt, which they will. So JJ Watt, yes, he is a Texan, fifty-six percent, no, thirty-three, and somebody said retires at eleven percent. Go wrong. So, I highly doubt it. <laughs> all right, so our next one here. 
where does Eric B. Enemy land next year? We got the Falcons, mm -hmm. the Texans, the Jags, or is it other? I like this question, Daniel. This is a good question. I'm going to go with the Atlanta Falcons. Where okay. going to end up at. Jason? Ooh. I like the Jags, actually. I kinda, that's why I put the Jags. I like down. the Jags because I could see him a fit. That team is freaking desperate, dude. They need some help. Connor? Uh. Hmm? <sighs> I would, as a fan of him, I would love it if he went to the Texans. Um, but I don't think, I think he's going to be a Chief next year. I think oh, he's stay again one more year? I think he's back. Are, the, uh, are the Los Angeles Chargers off the table? No, it's, it's in the others category. There's the others category. Okay, so I'm going to other category, and I'm going to go Chiefs. Okay. Uh, but I would love to see him be a Texan. Okay. Yeah, I, I would want to see the Chargers, actually, because I would want to see him step in there with Justin Herbert. But It would be nice. He has some good options. Uh, Twitterverse says Falcons at 29%, Texans at 41%, Jacks at 18 and other with 12%. And that's a 17-voter, too, highest one of the night. Yeah, so. That's a good question. Like I said, it's not all um, So next one here, guys. Uh, we kind of really talked about it all this season, but... Will Dak get paid? Nah, screw that. Will Dak get paid? Paid by Dallas? No, just paid. Just, well, yeah, someone's going to pay him. So the options are no. he better or he'll no? Oh, hell no. Okay. Mike, Jason? Yeah, I don't think he's going to get paid because he's got to prove that he is worth a damn at coming off of this injury. So I know he's proved himself up to this point in his career, but, I mean, he's got to prove – Prove himself to be healthy at this point, right? That's right. Connor? What uh, do you got? So, okay, the Cowboys are going to have mid to late first round pick. Mm -hmm. So, cross quarterback out of there. Um, they're going to have free agency, cross quarterback out of there. Uh, so, yeah, he's going to get paid because the other alternative is Andy Dalton. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's the, other back up, who's the other backups that popped in? Uh, it was, uh, it was a guy guys? from it was a Delaware State or something. Yeah, Delaware like State. Oh my god. Danucci. Ben Danucci. <laughs> oh, that was yeah. awful. Danucci season came. Danucci and might get paid, right? Yeah. Can he get paid? Uh, I'm the worst quarterback. I'm gonna say that Dak gets paid, and I think he deserves to get paid. Uh, I think if the Cowboys care about their culture, Dak gets paid. Uh, Dak has a strong connection, obviously, with Cooper. C.D. Lamb, their rookie from the get-go, and then also Michael Gallup, who's severely underrated as a receiver. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, if they're smart, Dak gets paid, and he should get paid because there's not really any other options out there. Unless, you know, wild thought, Falcons get rid of Matt Ryan. Okay, great. Now we just get, what's he, 38, 38-year-old Matt Ryan, like to run the well, Cowboys you could, offense. You could give Matt Ryan sense. a year or two and then draft and develop a quarterback too. So that's definitely, it seems like the Cowboy way. Yeah, yeah it does really. like the Cowboys. The Cowboys, Cowboys, way, well, like, the Cowboys <laughs> are going to keep Dak. Dak's a top ten quarterback. Like he's going to be, he's yeah. going to be fine. Like he should get paid, and he will. All right. So Twitterverse says he better at twenty five percent, and hell no at seventy five percent. And I didn't state where he was going. I just said, will he get paid? Hey. And someone will pay him. All right, guys. Final question of the night here, and something to think about. Does Drew Brees come back next year? Uh, yeah, I think so, because he just can't – he doesn't know when to say no. Like, he loves football so much, and I think this is his biggest passion in his life, is football. And he also, even though he's having a hard time, and especially against the Chiefs coming back off from his injury with his broken ribs and came out and had a rough time, I think Brees just wants to play football. So it's not with, if it's not with the Saints, for whatever reason, next year, he will end up somewhere playing football. I don't know who it's going to be with, but he's not ready to retire yet. All right. Yeah, I agree with you. He is not going to retire, uh, but he is. If he comes back, which he will, he is going to fall off a cliff. I mean, he got lucky this year. We were saying the preseason, or at least I was saying the preseason, that he's going to fall off the cliff midseason, but he got lucky. He injured his ribs, which saved his arm. And so now he can still have a productive season. That's not going to happen next year. So he's going to come back, and then he's going to be cooked about week four. Cooked about week four. Connor? I think he's already cooked. I don't think he comes back. I think he's toast. Like, I think, like, he got the he got the crap kicked out of him this year. Like, he's done. He's got – you saw 
just I mean, looking at his, uh, looking at that game the Chiefs and the Saints played, they showed his family in the suite mm-hmm. multiple times. Like he's got two kids that look like they're getting ready to start sports and like their thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, they, are. they are. Their kids wanted Mahomes jerseys, like yeah, for yeah. Christmas. Oh, like, that's a little weird. Yeah, he, your dad is playing in the NFL. And they want Mahomes jerseys. Dude, he's <laughs> he's weird. he's done, and I, I think he's going to get a lot of internal pressure too, to be done because mm-hmm. I think it's it's time. But for, I don't think for Drew Taysom himself Hill. wants to be done. Well, that's fine. It doesn't really matter what he wants. It's like just, Donnie, some, dude, some team will want Drew Brees on their team. But they're not going to so, pay him what Drew Brees wants, though. No. With the way the salary cap set up now, there's, there's teams you have, to, like, you have to get rid of money at times, like overpay for players. You mean like the Raiders? Well, right. Of course, the Raiders have done that before. They've just <laughs> overpaid players because they had to get rid of money just to fit underneath the certain cap requirement of money spent. Nobody and you just think someone's going to overpay them no matter what. Where okay. That? So somebody's going to pay them no matter what. So you're talking about a team that's probably not very good. More than okay? likely. And you think Drew Brees is going to go to somebody who's got me and you blocking for him? Like, it's not going to happen. We're on There's the verge no of being good that needs a above-average quarterback well, to come in and save the day. verge of being good still means that you and I are probably blocking for him. What about, like, who, well, what about Bill Belichick wanting one more year in, in the Patriots and no getting chance. Drew Brees? No, I don't no see chance. that. No That's way. not going to happen. There's no way. There's well, no it would be better than Jason Stidham or Cam Newton. I think Stidham it season, baby. No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> the thing about Drew Brees is this, this reminds me a lot of Brett Favre going to the Vikings. And so Drew Brees, he's looking at himself and he's saying, okay, I'm younger than Tom Brady, so I'm ready to play forever. And so there will be a team, I believe, out there, and I don't know who it's going to be. I don't really care that it's going to go. they're going to go for Drew Brees, but he has nothing left in the tank. Brady's an anomaly, though. Yeah. That's the difference, though, is like, you just brought up Favre, Brady, and Drew Brees, okay? Favre still had a rocket for an arm, at even at the end old. of his career. Tom Brady has a rocket for an arm still at the end of his career. Drew Brees has nothing. N- nothing. <laughs> like, he's got a good system on his back right, right but now. there's still going to be an idiot team out there that, that looks at this and says, oh, Drew Brees is younger than Tom Brady, so he's got a lot left in the tank. Let's just give him a, a bunch of money, for even if it's only for, like, one year. You know what I'm saying? Well, even if there's an idiot team, like, Drew Brees himself is probably not an idiot, from what I understand. You know what I mean? Like, he's going <laughs> to probably be smart enough to realize, okay, do I want to go play quarterback for the Jets, or do I want to go uh, uh, retire? I'm probably going to retire, so I don't, I don't know, Break five more ribs playing for the Jets and we What about Jackson? Sure the weather's one. pretty nice down there. Yeah, they have a guy named Trevor Lawrence that's coming to town. Even, even so. the Jets had a Brett Favre for a year. Touché. So Brett Favre still chose the Jets at one point in his Brett career. Brett Favre, yeah, he still had 300% more arm strength than Drew Brees ever has in his career. Yeah, I agree with you on that for sure. <laughs> so, quick thoughts here on this Drew Brees deal for me. Uh, last year, he was contemplating for quite a long time. Before he decided to come back, he had anchor positions already lined up. People were offering him money of that, and he decided to come back a year. I personally don't think he comes back next year. I think we just need to take in glory this last game of what we got of Drew Brees and what we've got this last season and, and just enjoy seeing him play because I don't think the guy's coming back. <clears throat> I'm starting Chad Henney over Drew Brees in that league, by the way. That's fair. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> Twitterverse, Twitterverse here, guys. Does Drew Brees come back next year? Yes. 57% say they do. You're wrong. And no, 43% <laughs> say they don't. So, hey, guys, that was a fun game of pickings here. So, real quick, we are going to actually jump into uh, a little playoff talk here going on. We're going to talk about – I'm going to have Jace, JG here talk about some scenarios going on, what to expect coming up this weekend, and then some quick thoughts from us here. So, JG, break down the scenarios we got coming up this week. All right, guys, we're going to start with the NFC East. There's no more important division that we can talk about right now than the NFC East, right? Because you got Washington six and nine, Dallas six and nine, you got the Giants at five and ten. So I want to know your guys' thoughts. We've already gone over this a little bit, uh, but who are your picks for the NFC East? I've got the New York Giants. Spoiler alert: winning the division. No. Cowboys, yeah. New York Giants. No, that's not even going to happen. What is wrong with you? I still like right. Washington for me. So here's what's going on with the NFC East. The division, as you all know out there, has been a complete disaster for the entire season. And it is going to continue to be a disaster in Week 17, where the Giants will beat the Dallas Cowboys and 
the Philadelphia Eagles will beat the WFT. What do we call that? Washington football team, not WTF, which is what I really want to call it. <laughs> uh, but that's that's what I've got for the NFC East. So why do you guys disagree with me on that? Like, why don't you think the Giants can win that division? Uh, first off, it's called Alex Smith is actually playing this week. And when Alex Smith plays, he wins. Like, do we need anything else? So, Tanner, you and I are on the same page as far as Washington, right? Yeah. like are going to win the NFC East. If, as long as Alex Smith plays, Alex Smith wins. Okay. Dwayne Haskins ain't going to lead that team. Obviously, you're not going to lead no team now. Uh, like, you're not going to find a winner outside of Alex Smith. He, the guy comes in, and he continues to put them in position. He doesn't put Connor's teams in position very well, but he puts his team in position. Yeah, the Cowboys are going to be the, the guys who come out of that. The Eagles are not good. Uh, the Cowboys have been playing better, especially defensively, over the past five weeks. Um, Andy Dalton is a is Andy Dalton has played playoff football. He knows what this is about. He's been there before. They have much better, to me, the offense in, in Dallas is probably better than many of the offenses he had in Cincinnati. Um, the Eagles are just terrible. Uh, and the Giants stink. Giants stink. Um, the Washington football team stinks. Uh, the Cowboys are the best of the group by far. The problem with the Cowboys is that they had to work through a transition of running an offense with Dak Prescott to Andy Dalton, which was a significant change. Ben and then Andy Dalton from Ben DiNucci was a significant change. And then back to Andy Dalton, significant change. Like, there is a lot that happened in those middle part of the season for the Cowboys that really did not add up well for him. Connor, that resume, though, you're talking about Andy Dalton playoff football. He's 0-4 with one touchdown and four interceptions. It's six sucks. interceptions it's in sucks. those games. He's, yeah, he's been there, though. He's been there. So is Alex Smith. Yeah. hands every time. But yeah. seriously, you guys just made my point for me. And I'm, that's why I'm telling you the Giants are going to be a playoff team at 6-10. and 10. That division is a disaster. Wait. And, they, you know, the Giants are going to be in there. Like, I thought they were eliminated last week. With their loss. I'm pretty sure the Giants were eliminated last week with their loss. They are not eliminated. They are going to make the playoffs. Mike, fact check this. Honestly, guys. Fact check the Giants. Fact check. (laughs) If you are betting on the NFC East, you know, please don't. Just please, you know, pull your hand off the trigger. Right? You do not want to bet on this division. Don't bet on that division. It's too late. I'm just telling you right now, the 6-10 and Giants are going to win the division. It is still possible. Is actually going to happen, but quite honestly, we need to move on. So uh, uh, we've got the Arizona Cardinals, and Mike, you can you know you can bring up your other stuff it. later. But it looks like there's a 12 percent chance they can make play. 12 percent. Okay. So still, Ooh, you need to bump that up a little bit. Good call, Jason. Gonna happen. Good call. 12 percent chance. With, with Washington Tanner at a 73 percent chance. Yes, they should be. As they should be. Correct. All right. I'm on Cowboys. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along, we've got the uh, Arizona Cardinals versus the L.A. Rams. And all Arizona needs to do this week is win, guys. So if they win, they're in. What do you think is going to happen with Arizona? Man, what in the hell happened to Arizona being such a great team to, hey, I'm going to fall off out of the playoffs and I'm going to give the Bears the lead this last one. Like, Let's not what? forget the Cardinals went like four and twelve last year. Okay? Yeah, but no, largely like, the same. It's team. an improvement. I'm not basing it off of last year. I'm basing it off no. of what they were Here's doing. We're not being haters. I think we're all here like the Cardinals. We like the, the Cardinals. I like Kyler Murray. I, love I want the them to Hopkins. win. I love the team they have built over there, and the team's gonna be good going forward for the future for sure. No, oh, but far. I think with the way that they've played recently, they've shown their true colors, what they are as a team, and they're just not playoff material right now. Unfortunately, they're honestly like an eight and eight type team. And that, that goes against what I believed in three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you guys know I was all about the Cardinals. And you picked them every team. week and pick them. I kept the picking way. the Cardinals to win. They kept failing. Yep. Bears for me are going to be over the Cardinals in that wild card spot. So what's that? What's that game? Who do the Bears got to play this week? The Bears play the Packers. The Bears play the Packers. Yeah. Okay. And then the Cardinals play the Rams. Rams are probably going to be without Jared Goff. There, there is no Jared Goff. That's, that's there is, yeah, he's officially out. He's like, officially Arizona out. is most likely going to win the game yeah. because but, they're starting. Uh, the Rams are starting John Wolford at quarterback in the, because Jared Goff just had thumb surgery. And the Cardinals are starting. So what's our requirement? It ain't Keller Murray. The, the, the Keller Murray's going to be out. Playoffs. No, third game. Third game. 
Is Kyler Murray actually out? Murray, Murray's hurt. Like, they already started to talk about the backup of Arizona playing this game. Who's the Cardinals' backup? God, it's a no, no name I've ever heard of. Okay, well, I didn't hear about that yet, but all I knew is the game itself. It's a toss-up still. Okay. This was the first pick em game that we've seen all year. So we know for a fact that Jared Goff is out. We're not sure about Kyler Murray. Uh, Mike is going to look that up. But moving on to the Chicago Bears, what do you guys think about their chances as far as making the playoffs? they got to beat the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, they're not going to beat the Packers. Like, even if the Packers' backups are in, they're not going to beat the Packers. The Packers are significantly better than the Bears. And we're relying on Mitchell with two L's to get them to the playoffs. And he has played better in the last few weeks, but it's not like he's been a world beater by any means. Um, so I did I did lose track of your question there, Jason, but just to kind of reiterate what we are just talking about, if the Cardinals do beat the Rams and then the Bears do beat – or the Packers do beat the Bears, the Cardinals are then in at 9-7 and seven for the sixth seed. So it's going to come down to Week 17, and the Cardinals doing their part and the Packers doing their part to beat the Chicago Bears. So it comes down to really the – to me, the Packers are going to win that game. But uh, the, the the Cardinals got to win that game to be in the playoffs. Uh, so so your your backup quarterback for the Cardinals, real quick, is Chris Streveler. Isn't Brett Hundley with them? He is, but he's hurt. Hmm. So your South Dakota guy coming oh. in to play for uh, Kyler Murray possibly this weekend. I'm still um, taking them. Like the running game is good enough. I'm, Just I'm dumping off to Chase Edmonds and let him run. I'm taking the. Yeah, I'm taking them the Cardinals over the Rams. The Rams have had a shitty ass last three or four weeks, and it's been really disappointing. I want the Bears to make it a game. Even if Aaron Rodgers doesn't play, I think the Bears still have a chance. And Mitchell actually has been playing damn pretty well for the Bears. He's gotten them back in this position uh, since he's taken back over. But I think Arizona prevails over the Rams. All right, so we, we just uh, got confirmation that Kyler Murray is on the positive side of questionable. That's good. So if he does indeed play, I do have Arizona beating the Rams with no Jared Goff. And I've got the Chicago Bears giving the Packers a run for the money. This oh, is a yeah. tough divisional game. The Bears are who I thought they were at the beginning of the season. You guys disagreed with me. And my hope as a Patrick Mahomes fan is that they are going to crush Aaron Rodgers' dreams of that MVP award. Chicago has the ninth-ranked defense in the league, only giving up 22 points per game. And so give me the Bears in this matchup. The Bears. So, okay, so you're thinking the Bears. And this is going to be – it's just so interesting how the Bears were even still in the freaking play of this whole thing. But that's how bad Arizona's been. It's been disappointing. Yeah, you guys, you guys wrote off the Bears. I mean, what as six a, weeks as ago? A we wrote off like after week five, after the first loss. Mike and I were like, "Yeah, they're done." They're as of right now, if the, the Cardinals make the playoffs, they go to Seattle to play in that wild card game. For the record, I'm still writing off the Bears because they're not good. They're, they're, not, not. they're not a good football team. And I agree with Connor. I'm with Connor on that. Still, so. they're not a good football team. But when you have seven playoff teams in each conference. That gives an extra crappy team an extra chance to, to somehow get in there. And I'm going to take the Bird Gang, who actually has to play in a good co- or good division, and not the uh, Bears, who have to play the Vikings and the Lions four <laughs> times a year and still can't figure out how to beat them. I'm going to have to take the Cardinals, who have to play the Rams twice, the Seahawks twice. Like, they have to play real teams twice, the Niners twice. I know the Niners have had a tough year with injuries and COVID and whatnot, mm-hmm. but, like, the Birds – are a solid, solid group. Yeah, I mean, and when you got seven playoff spots, I'm actually going with the Cardinals and the Bears. I think they're both going to make it. So let's go ahead and move that, on. How is that possible? No, it's, it's you say Cardinals, Cardinals and Bears. And the Bears? How yeah, is that no, possible? if they both win, they're in. Listen, it is possible because if the Cardinals so the Rams win, are kicked out. Yes. So what would happen is the Bears would then play the Packers in the playoffs, which would be back-to-back games, 
and then the Arizona Cardinals at the seventh seed would play against the two seed Seattle Seahawks. So, so you're telling me the Rams have fallen off so far it's, it's possible. that now they're in the contention to be eliminated? Correct. Dude, the what? Rams, the they don't have their quarterback, which could be a good thing, you know, because I'm not a big <laughs> fan of Jared Goff, but um, they're probably going to lose that game. Wow. Honestly, let's just move on to the AFC. Yeah, yeah. what we got AFC is sounding yeah. like trash right now. Oh, there. man. Well, it's not mess. trash, but it sounds like trash. So we're going to start with the, uh, well, you know, it's not trash. They got the Chiefs and then everybody else. But um, anyway, and AFC, you got Titans. And so Tennessee Titans are in if they beat Houston or the Colts, Ravens, or Miami Dolphins lose. So what do you guys think about the Titans this year? Derrick Henry's taking the playoffs. Titans in. Titans are in easy. Same as last year. To me, that's the exact same team as we saw last year. So, mm-hmm. you know the you know the formula to beat them. You know the formula they're going to use against you. And so, the Chiefs, they should know what to expect. Especially, uh, we saw them last year in regular season and lost. Saw them in the playoffs and got a victory in a, in a tough matchup for sure. They're a good physical team. So, I like the Titans, and they're going to be in. And, I mean, I don't know. You guys know what I thought about them? Are, I think are, we, a legitimate team. are we blaming the weather last week for Derrick Henry only rushing for, what was it, oh, some ridiculous amount? Part of it, are part. we blaming? Are we giving credit to the Packers' defense for knowing how to stop the Titans? How many rushing yards do you have? I want to say, I thought it was, like, very small. It wasn't a good day. Uh, but uh, although he was, like, was, normal. We had a snowy day. Week? No, it was not normal at all. We had a snowy day for sure, but. No, he um, was like a, he was like a normal running back for a week. Yes, right. Yeah. So one week, almost like the Chiefs. Chiefs. Off, you mean that like the Chiefs often scoring seventeen points? Yeah. Because they're in the NFL and things happen. So gosh, that's it's tough. Like, it's kind of a similar thing, right? He had a normal. Derek. Jesus. How many running? How many rushing yards he had? Ninety-eight yards, four and a half. <laughs> four point <laughs> three. <laughs> that's a knee slapper, Tanner. Ninety-eight yards. What a small amount. Oh, of in the what snow. A, in the what snow. snow. What a what a small <laughs> amount of. Uh, yeah, I thought it was smaller amount than that. Uh, against anal- analytically the best defense in the NFL his, the Packers. his longest rush was 10 yards what a bomb oh, that's so tough what a loser uh, it's a good team what, what's your point Jason hey, you all right. the whole point is <laughs> the Titans are in if they win yeah, they're in. let's moving moving right along let's go to the Miami Dolphins uh, they're going to be in the playoffs if they, can, if they can beat Buffalo or we see a loss by Baltimore Cleveland or Indianapolis hmm. Okay, so Jason has him out of the playoffs, obviously, because he told me the last three games they will lose. Take it to the bank. They didn't lose last game, but they're Take supposed to lose to this bank. game. So Jason has this one out. I like Miami. I love the things that they have done this year, and I think they beat the Bills because I don't see Josh Allen playing. I'm pretty sure Stephon Diggs won't play. He better play. I haven't my you know, fantasy, I don't think he plays. So I, I'm seeing the Dolphins come away with this victory here. And mm. get in the playoffs, but that might kick the Colts out at eleven wins. Are we doing pickums, Tanner, or are we just no? I'm just about, telling you. <laughs> so I'm just telling you. Yeah, not, dolphins pressure. are in, as I deserve to be. Dolphins are in. All right, let's moving uh, moving right along to the Baltimore Ravens. They are in if they can beat Cincinnati, or we have a Cleveland Browns or a Colts loss. Ravens are in. Ravens are in no matter what. I think Raven. Who the Raven play? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati is going to, not going to win three in a row. No, but even, if, even if the Bengals do win this game, the Ravens still currently, as things stand, would still be in. Yeah. Keep yeah. that in mind. Okay. All right. So last team we're going to go over here is the Cleveland Browns. They are in if they beat Pittsburgh or the Colts lose, or we have a Titans loss with. Wins from the Ravens and the Dolphins. It gets a little confusing. Yeah, that's crazy. The Browns might be out as of right now. They're out. No Big Ben, though. No Big Ben playing. Mason Rudolph has been named the starter this week. So then the Browns, in that case, will then be playing the Steelers again back-to-back weeks. Then they get Big Ben. But here's the thing. They'd be going to Pittsburgh to play that playoff game. Yeah, and they get Big Ben this time, the second time around. Yeah, so. That means the Colts might miss the freaking playoffs, guys. That's fine. How crazy (laughs) is that, though? (laughs) They're not that, they're not that good. They're yeah. about to be a little win well, season. Okay, hang yeah, on. They're the going to be a still be a, five. The Colts will still be a, a seven season. On a on an extended playoff season, you have an eleven and four. Tanner, the only way that they miss is if they lose to the Jaguars. Is that really it? Yes. If they if they win their game against the Jaguars, they're in. My Who's playing out? season. Who's out? Who's out? Well, let's see the switch here. We're going like, no, we're looking at so. If the Colts Miami, win. The Titans win. The Dolphins, right, the Dolphins are out. And the Dolphins are out. Dolphins are out. All right, wow. let me give you the lowdown right now. They need one of three things to happen before their game even starts. They need Baltimore to lose to Cincinnati or Miami loses to Buffalo 
or Cleveland loses to Pittsburgh. That's just if crazy. one of those things doesn't happen, then the Colts game doesn't even matter. That's insane. That's I mean, that's the fun part about this time of year, though, is all the excitement that could happen. So As of right now, all of the teams, by the way, of the AFC side that are in the playoffs currently have more than 11 wins. Or 11 wins or more, I should say. All I know is that all those teams stink. And they're going to get beat by whoever they play in the first round of the playoffs. So yeah, they're all pretty trash compared to Kansas City. So we know that. Yeah, we ain't worried about it. So cool, guys. But any else playoff talk there, Jason? Well, guys, keep an eye out for this weekend here because it's sounds like it could get entertaining. So, uh, but hey, we're going to jump ahead. We're going to do some pickums real quick here. We're just going to run through it all. Um, and we got Sunday, <laughs> Jason. We'll talk about our YouTubers at a different one here. Oh, we're gosh. starting to cut low on time here. So wait, how, where are we at? Are we doing a two-hour podcast? Uh, we're pretty much on pace for it right now. Pickums. We we're at about an hour fifteen. So this will be our longest podcast of all time. This is, well, we got four people here. You got to think about that. Hey, Eric, do you want to jump in on this Pickums? Oh. Eric's our producer. Eric, oh, he's okay. our super fan. He's Eric, no Eric fan. decides no <laughs> on this final week of Pickums. He does not, but he is in here. So, all right, so we'll jump in here, and I'm just going to go down the list. So the Chiefs are going to be the first stop, just so you guys know, because I'm just going down my ESPN phone. Real quick. Uh, so we got Pickums here, and I'll get a final result come next week. We'll have a big party. We'll congratulate whoever the winner is. Mike Settle. Probably this guy. Uh, but um, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll have a big deal about it next week. Anyways, so we'll start here real quick. Chargers Chiefs, guys, who you got? Uh, Chargers. Yeah, I'll take the Chargers. Uh, Chiefs, Chad Henney, 405 touchdowns for Jeez. me to get a fantasy win. Eric says Chiefs. Matt Flynn style. Kyle I'm Kyle going Kyle. Chiefs mm-hmm. as well. So we got three Chiefs, two Chargers. A Dolphins, Bills, guys. Do the Dolphins beat the Bills? No. Uh, I think. He says, screw it all. <laughs> here at, uh, uh, I'm going to go Dolphins. Uh, no, I'm going to go, yeah, Dolphins over Bills to win, actually. Dolphins over Bills. Yeah. Connor? Dolphins. Eric? Bills. Eric says Bills. I'm going uh, <laughs> Dolphins to win this game because they have so much to, to prove. Jason, who are you going for? All of them. Whatever you want. Jason's going all of them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all Jason's he's, he, and Jason's running <laughs> He's running the Aero Stadium truck right now. He's Oakland uh, Raiders. Er, sorry, Las Vegas Stadium right now. Um, Ravens <laughs> on Bengals. Uh, what do you got? I got Ravens. Connor? Ravens. <laughs> Eric's got the Ravens, and I got the Ravens because I don't believe the Bengals can win three in a row. And Jason has all of them. Uh, we got Steelers, <laughs> Browns. Uh, Browns for me. Browns. Browns. Eric has Browns. I have the Browns because without Big Ben, the Steelers are nothing. Is Jason doing a brown or yellow right now? I don't know. They at least have a chance with Big Ben. The Steelers aren't even good with Big Ben. Uh, Vikings, Lions. Uh, Fuck them both. I'm going to go Vikings. (laughs) (laughs) Connor. Uh, Vikings. Eric. Eric says Vikings. Delvin Cook. Uh, I am going Vikings to win this game as well. Even though they could have won two weeks ago, but whatever. Uh, Jets, Patriots, guys. Should the Jets upset the Patriots this week? They give them a five, but the Patriots still win. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Eric? The goddamn Jets. The goddamn New York Jets from Eric. And then I'm going I'm going the, oh, man. The Jets are going to do three in a row, guys. I'm going Jets. I picked the oh, New York man. team on the last week of the well, season. Sam Darnold's better than Cam Newton. Yeah, right now he is. Uh, Cowboys, Giants. Oh, gosh. We just talked about this, um, but I'm going to go, I guess, Cowboys here. Cowboys? Yep. Cowboys. Eric. Giants. Eric's picking the Giants. JG's got the Giants. I'm going the Cowgirls, and uh, I don't know why, just because of Andy Dalton season. Andy Dalton season. There we go. Falcons, Bucks. Oh, uh, give me the Bucks for sure. Uh, Falcons. Eric. 
think the Falcons are going to put up a close one, but the Falcons are actually going to prevail. <laughs> Eric has the Falcons winning the game. What do you got, JG? Uh, Bucks! Bucks! <laughs> GG has the Bucks! I'm going uh, Bucks on this one as well. Uh, Packers, Bears, guys. Packers. Eric's got the Packers. Eric's yeah. got the Packers. Packers by go, 1,000. Go, for me, I'm going to go Bears. Yeah, you already know I got the Bears. The Bears are who I thought they were. They got the ninth-ranked defense in the NFL. They're going to crush Aaron Rodgers' MVP hopes this year. Oh, wow. That's I'm tough. going Packers in this one. Uh, we got Raiders-Broncos, guys. Raiders-Broncos, who you got? Good game. I'm excited for it. Uh, super stoked, but I'm going to go with Raiders. I, yeah, nobody cares about this game. I'll just take the Raiders. Yeah, I honestly don't care. I hope they both lose. That's fair. Eric, they both already lost, so just I don't care. That's not even a real game. Eric's got the Raiders, and I got the Broncos winning. Uh, Jags, Colts. Colts all the way. Yeah, I made it back just in time for my easy money bet of the week, guys. So you got Indianapolis at minus 13 and a half. That is not going to happen. So uh, Indianapolis is going to win that game, uh, but they're not going to cover that spread. Indy is going to win the game, and they are going to miss the playoffs at 11 and 5. That's wow. crazy. I've, uh, got, uh, yeah. I've, I've got the uh, – it is Mike Glennon season, but I'm going to take the Colts and, contrary to Jason, Colts cover. Colts cover. And it's 14 now. That's fine. It could be 18, and I think they're going to cover. Okay. So I'm going Colts <laughs> as well in this one. Cardinals, Rams. Uh, this is a tough one, you guys. Uh, but I will go with the Rams. The Rams, wow. Connor's going to hate that. Yep. Yeah, I respect that pick, actually, because this is the first pick em game that we've had all season. You got no Jared Goff. We think Kyler Murray's going to play, but we're not really sure. Uh, you know, Arizona's got to win. They have to win this game to make the playoffs. So I'm going to go with the Cardinals. I'm going with uh, where I live right now, Bird Gang. Eric? AZ. Eric has AZ. Bird Gang, too. All right, I'm going, gosh, I'm going Cardinals because the Rams are just disappointed. Uh, Seahawks 49ers. Uh, give me the Seahawks all the way. Yeah, Seahawks are minus three and a half. That's not going to happen. you got uh, George Kittle. He is back, and he is healthy for the 49ers, and he's going to give that Seattle – Defense, which is trash, it's going to give them some problems. So give me the Niners. So I'm going to go opposite of Jason again. Seahawks and Seahawks to cover by a lot because the Seahawks defense is significantly better now that Jamal Adams is back. Yep, I'm going Seahawks, Eric. One of us is winning money this week. <laughs> Eric? Seahawks. Eric's going Seahawks. Uh, Saints, Panthers. Oh, I love me some Saints. I always will. I always will. Always do. Saints for me all the way on that one. Oh, yeah, give me the Saints. I mean, they still have a shot at home field advantage, so uh, this game matters to them. Give me the Saints in this game. Uh, I love Matt Rule, but I'm going Saints. I'm going Saints as well. Saints. All right, uh, Titans, Texans. Texans by a million. Or Texans. Titans by a million. Titans sorry. by a million. With MVP Derrick Henry. Yeah, give me Tennessee. Tennessee. Tennessee for Eric. Mike? I like, I like Tennessee as well. Mike for Tennessee, Tennessee as well. Ever, right? Uh, Washington Eagles. Who you got, Mike? Uh, we'll go with Washington on that one for me, of course, because I said they were going to win the division. Sure. Well, since I have the Giants winning Winnie. the division at 6-10, I'm going to have to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. They Jaylen are minus Hurts. one in this game. Jalen Hurts is going to play the spoiler and get the job done. Connor? Eagles to cover. Eric? Washington football. Eric has Alex Smith winning, and I got Alex Smith <laughs> winning the game. And that wraps up week 17, guys. You're telling me Washington, uh, Philadelphia is Monday Night Football? That's a Monday Night Football. That's and it was pretty, pretty awful. It, that's disgusting. It, it was flexed. I know. I saw that. It was flexed. Sunday Night Football, that's actually. disgusting. No Monday Night Football this week. It was Sunday Night Football. So that is a flex game. But, hey, guys, we're going to actually wrap her up here today. I uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, join us if you haven't caught Connor's interview, please view that as well. Uh, we'll have that up as well. Um, but, Connor, thank you for joining us in the Sports Buffoons. I hope we were buffoonery enough for you. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your insights, your input, and everything like that. Yeah, C-Dawes, you helped us out a lot coming on the show today. Yeah. This is the second time you've been a special guest. 
our first and only special guest so far on the Sports Buffoons. You should feel special. Very special. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for earlier on we had a podcast with Connor as well about his uh, tenure within the baseball community and as far as what he's done um, going forward as a coach within the now Seattle Mariners as we've progressed his career to. So check that out on our previous podcast as well because he gives us some great insight on what it took for him to develop himself as a coach and really a man growing into becoming a coach as time went forward. That's great. Yeah, I do want to thank you again, Connor, for joining us, uh, giving us all of your insight. And I also want to thank all of our listeners out there. We really appreciate you guys. And I want you guys to hit up hit us up on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to be going over, uh, maybe on our next podcast, the uh, Final Four. So hit us up on Twitter, Twitter, at Sports of Foons. What do you think the uh, Final Four is going to be in the NFL this year? Ooh. Kyle, how would you take this one? Uh, Chiefs, Bills. Um, is that possible? I don't know what the bracket looks like. Yeah, yeah I like Chiefs, possible. Bills for the AFC for yeah. sure. Uh, I like that a lot. NFC, I like Packers and Buccaneers. Uh, NFC, I would go Packers and um, I'd probably go Packers, Bucks as well. Uh, and it's going to be Chiefs Packers Super Bowl. Yep, that's what I think. Um, and better quarterback prevails that day. I hope the Chiefs win. <laughs> that's going to be a tough game. It'd be a tough so, one. So basically, Connor and I agree on the entire thing there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I'm going actually Chiefs, and I think that we could play the Titans, right? It's po- well, of course, Aaron's possible. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So I'd go Chiefs Titans as the final two in the AFC, and then I'm going to go. Sp- Saints and Packers because they're one and two. So I'm going to go with those two as well. And then I think it is going to be a Packers Chiefs Super Bowl. All right. Happy New Year. Very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I, I like you guys' picks. I'm not going to give mine up right now. I'm going to save it for no, my next gonna solo. No, it's for everybody. Okay. And uh, that'll be a topic on my next solo podcast. So right. we're going to leave it there. Good deal. Mike, you want to give our shout outs real quick? Shout outs. Uh, shout out to the homies out there that want to follow us on Twitter over at Sports Buffoons, as well as on Twitch, at Sports Buffoons 15 as well. And follow us as well on YouTube and Facebook, because Tanner Dawson got the Facebook going real well, it sounds like. I'm not even on Facebook, so he's doing all the work on that. So appreciate him very much for doing that for us. But uh, otherwise, shout out to Connor. Shout out to Eric for being our producer tonight. And yeah, helping appreciate me out Eric my, and the my maintenance my producer. Off my table. Uh, Connor, you can find Connor on, at Twitter on Coach, at Coach Doss. Uh, anywhere else they can find you? Uh, exchange gram, Instagram, uh, same thing. It's Coach underscore Doss though. Coach underscore Doss. Okay. And you can find me in Arizona, rooting on the Bird Gang while I'm there. There you go. Yeah. So guys, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate your love, uh, and then we will catch you on the next one. JG. All right, I am out. We will see you guys on the next one. See you guys. Happy New Year.